Oh my god, hey! Hi! Welcome back to the streets of New York City. Mickey finally has a normal, uh, well, a, a, a camera mounted microphone. I don't, I'm not holding a microphone in my hand anymore. Hopefully Yay. you can hear me. I'll find out when I'm editing this footage. Um, but it's week two yeah. of our second Broadway trip of 2023. We have just been to B&H Photo and Video which is a tech store that we were recommended uh, to go and get me a new vlogging microphone, and we did. It was very cool. It was very cool. It was a fun novelty experience. They were yeah. closed all of last week for a Jewish holiday, but now they have opened. Um, and yeah, although it is a American holiday day today. Oh yeah. It is um, uh, Indigenous People's Day. Yeah. Happy Indigenous People's Day to you all, formerly known as Columbus Day. Um, and yeah, we're chilling in New York. It's a Monday night on Broadway, which, for those of you who don't know, is not really much of a thing. It's not in the UK either, to be honest. Well, it used to be. I'm, I remember that when UK shows were Monday to Saturday and Sunday was the dark <laughs> yeah. day. But, but now, more and more shows are doing Sunday shows. It's interesting, though, because regionally, um, Faith is not on Sundays or Mondays. You said that tend to do a Monday, that's right, yeah. yeah. But like, regional producing <laughs> houses will do a Monday night. I Very think so. Sunday, yeah. This has become a separate debate. <laughs> but we are walking up 8th, 7th, 9th? Walking up an avenue. We're not um, on Broadway. We're a few avenues over. Okay. I, I, my inclination was to say 8th. Oh, we're going to say 10th. 10th. Ten. What a plot twist that was! <laughs> Goodness gracious, we're, we're walking not that up. used to how you recognise avenues. Still, no, we're too we're too far below the theatre district. Although we did walk up this way the other day. Oh well, we're Where's walking the up. Hotel? There's the hotel. We're walking up Tenth Avenue. Uh, we've been to Dunkin' Donuts to get a. Aaron got an enormous, delicious looking yeah. beverage. What was it, Aaron James? The signature pumpkin spice ice latte. Nice. I had a New York Giants donut because I'm patriotic. And I had omelette bites, which are the same as the ones for any UK peeps for Starbucks do, except that they come out like little donuts. They come out like little donuts? That's so I took sweet. a photo, it was so cute. That's cute. Which was great to put the sauce in. Mm. So I held it in the middle. Yesterday we went back to go and see Here Lies Love at the Broadway Theatre for the yeah. second time. Um, we sat in the mezzanine this time around because we'd done the standing experience and we wanted to see it from both perspectives and I am so glad we did yeah. because it does feel like not necessarily a completely different show but I think it enriches your appreciation of it. It's much easier to follow the musical upstairs. Yeah, from a narrative storytelling standpoint and to properly review it as a production I feel like you have to see it from the mezzanine but I would also recommend the standing experience. I'm going to make a, a video talking about this. Uh, but that is why we went to see that show twice in like less than a week. Um, we also did a meetup in Central Park. Thank you everyone who came along to that. Thank you uh, to the people who brought the black and white cookies and Canadian treats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Gluten free treats were meant a lot. Yep, you've had some lovely gluten free treats. And I've had a corn dog today for the first time from a Nathan's cart on 34th Street. Which we asked our friends. Um, Brendan and Juliana where That was the recommendation go. like on the last trip months ago and I didn't yeah. get one in March and I left New York sad that I hadn't tried a street corn I was, dog. Because I was like, I worry about his health, so I was like, can we know where he I can was, go? I was I was fine. Like... It's fine. I wanted to try one. So I've had a corn dog from a street cart. That was exciting. Um, and yeah. We didn't see an evening show yesterday because uh, we didn't have tickets for anything and we kind of like vaguely looked around but ultimately decided we didn't mind having an evening in so we did that instead and, uh, and Ashley introduced us to American Big Brother she did she did uh, but having told you that Broadway doesn't really do Monday nights we are at one of the few shows that does tonight spot the necklace we are at six we're going to see six on Broadway at the Lena Horn Theatre having seen it I can nearly call it the Lena Hall Theatre again Oh, no, Lena Hall. UK Theatre Award winner Lena Hall. Um, 
No, we're going to the Lena Horn Theatre. And Tony, yeah, also Tony Award winner Lena Horn. Going to the Lena Horn Theatre to go and see Six, making the United States the fourth country we will have seen Six in. Or that I will have seen Six in. You will have, I'm on three. You're on three. Because uh, we saw it last week in the Netherlands, and I've already posted many videos about that. If you had no idea, if that's a surprise to you, you can go and watch those. Uh, but yeah, and after that, I think we're going to see a new musical presentation at 54 Below. Yeah. Uh, mostly is... just to go to 54 Below, but that might be a fun yeah. surprise of a good show. Because we kind of have always seen the videos from that venue, but never been inside. So our friend Ashley was like, you are going to experience it this trip. Yeah, and then I think after that we might be exploring a nightlife spot, but more of that to come later on. For now we're going to walk around a little bit more, just killing time before our 7 o'clock curtain. Going to go get some food, and yeah, more exploring time in New York. It's a little bit overcast today, but it's not going to rain, I don't think. I'm optimistic. just past the West Side Theatre behind us where we saw Little Shop of Horrors at the weekend uh, which was fun as part of our three show day on Saturday that went well pausing by the Majestic Theatre so Aaron can read the planning permissions in the window here and this I think is like the old box office window that hasn't been utilised and it's only visible because they are stripping back layers of paint and such. It is a sad and staggering sight seeing this theatre completely dark. Meanwhile across the road Spamalot is waiting to go into the St James. They're already advertising. The cottage is down at the haze. Then we have the Broadhurst with beautiful noise and some like a hot at the Schubert just beyond that. This is a great street, one of my favourites in New York. Not opened yet so haven't seen it. Seen it recently seen it and seeing it on this trip. Let's carry on. <coughs> seen, seen it. Seen it twice, both trips. Seen it. Seen it. Not seen it on Broadway or in the West End, seen it three times on tour, but never in London or New York. What is this? Oh, beautiful noise. Not seen it. Not seen it. Not seen it. Waiting until it comes to London. MJ. Seen it. Seen it twice. We love corn. Six. Seeing it. Seeing it tonight. OMG. This could be the thumbnail of the video. Uh, I've seen it everywhere. Seen it. Seen it. Would have seen it again on this trip, but uh, tickets are hard to come by. And expensive. Seen it in London, not seeing it on Broadway because it's the same and Roger Bart was in both and I'm sure it'll be worth seeing but we're not seeing it. Not seen it. Didn't see it in the West End and so I was like I kind of subconsciously resent seeing it on Broadway. Also never seen Jaws so I feel like I won't appreciate it on the level it ought to be appreciated on. Not seeing Mr. DeVito because it opens after we leave. Seen it. It's closing sadly. It just announced it's closing at the end of the year. Uh, but it will be coming to the West End where we'll probably see it again. Seen it! Saw it this trip. Seen it twice this trip, which is unprecedented. Hey lies love. It's Jeff Heinbrook um, and the Book of Mormon. Seen it in London multiple times. Never seen it on Broadway. Saw it in London. Never seeing it again. Um, seen it! London and Broadway. Saw it on Broadway last week. First show we ever saw on Broadway. That has been our Schubert Alley check-in, everyone. Woohoo! In fact, we have too much time to kill, uh, and the restaurants we were thinking of going to before six aren't even open yet. So we are doing some window shopping in uh, theatre-themed shops. We've just been to uh, Theatre Circle. Theater Circle by the St. James, and now we're heading over to the Museum of Broadway gift shop. Yeah. Went all around the Museum of Broadway last time, and we probably won't visit it again on this trip, but we will go to the gift shop. In yeah. fact, we're there right now. Here it is, look at this fun window display for the Museum of Broadway Halloween parties. I wish we were here for that, that sounds so fun.
RIP at the play Grey House. Got invited to this play, first Broadway show I've ever been invited to go and see just organically uh, without me sending a bunch of email requests and uh, couldn't go because it was over the summer and we weren't here and it closed. Sad, sad for them. I heard it was interesting were the words that were used. Provocative, thought provoking, intriguing, spooky scary. Heading back down to go get food. Where do you, where do you want to eat? Where do I, I want know. to eat? Where do we want to eat, tiny people in my camera? My body, did, my body hasn't decided what it would like. No. No, I've had that corn dog and a donut. Now I'm like, I'm pretty chill. Yeah. The iced coffee has filled me. Yeah, maybe something smaller. Maybe we don't maybe. need a whole sit down maybe. dinner. I don't know. We've just been discussing, and you can you can tell we're at a loose end because I'm chatting to you a lot more today rather than running around doing things. We think this, which is 45th, yeah. uh, is maybe the street on Broadway and by extension in the world that has the most theatres on. So uh, down by the Museum of Broadway, which was still 45th, had the Lyceum and we think the Belasco. Oh, I don't know if the Belasco is next to the Hudson. Oh, the Belasco is next yeah. to the Hudson. Fine, then just the Lyceum. Um, the Mint's Golf, we've just walked past. The Marriott Marquis entrance is technically that side. But, but you can... Yeah, I think that counts. You can see the booth. Behind that is the Schoenfeld and the Golden and the Jacobs. And then across the next avenue, we have the Al Hirschfeld, where Milan Rouge is. And then on this side, the Music Box and the Imperial, where Bad Cinderella was, uh, which brings us to 10. I think, on this one yeah. street, Although, which is kind of mad. I'm 44th, I think it's like between 44th and 45th. 44th has quite a lot as well. 44th has like the St. James and the Broadhurst and... The Hayes. The Hayes the and Schubert. the Schubert and the Majestic. And the Minskoff, if you count the other entrance to the Minskoff, so six. Uh, is the Hudson further down? Hudson and the Oh, even if the... Oh, no, the Hudson no, and the yeah, Belasco are on that one as well. So got two on the other side. So eight. 45th still wins, yeah. baby. Team 45th. We're exploring the Marriott Marquis Hotel building where the entrance to the Marquis Theatre is. It's dark at the moment, as it was when we came earlier this year. The Britney musical Once Upon a One More Time opened and closed while we were away. But you can see all these posters just inside there. We continue to kill time. We went and took photos outside of six because smart to do it hours before the show when no one else is there. Life hack for you. Then um, I was a bit hungrier than Aaron, so I went to go and get a little, a little meal from Raising Cane's, which is new to Times Square. I'm a fried chicken aficionado and I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's better than Popeyes or Jollibee. That's my sizzling hot take for you. New York culture is also walking towards Schmackeries before a show and having Jerry Mitchell walk past you on the left, who we just met a few weeks yeah. ago in London for the launch of the Devil Wears Prada. But Aaron spotted him. I did not. I was too busy. I was, I was thinking about chicken and cookies. Who else have we seen on this trip? Who have the celeb sightings been? Oh, gosh. Much of the cast of Anne Juliet were hanging out yeah. at Glass House. So was Alex Newell. Multiple times we've been there. Oh, Chris Colfer. Oh, yeah, Chris Colfer. Glee's Chris Colfer was spotted coming out of With Melissa Etheridge. Etheridge's show at the Circle Which in the Square. Kate, Kate saw the same production and did not realise. Yeah, we were same. waiting for our friend Kate. There was Glee's Chris Colfer. Also, just, li just life's Chris Colfer. What's better than a schmackeries? Answer. Two schmackeries cookies with ice cream in the middle. My goodness. A taste sensation. And particularly good because I love an ice cream cookie sandwich and the best ones are done with slightly salt cookies and what I like about schmackeries a little bit of salt a little bit of salt to the cookie do you agree with me Aaron James I didn't try it no but like that their cookies are salty oh yeah they are a little bit yeah yeah um, and that pairs well with the sweetness of the ice cream otherwise just like sweet and sweet and sweet which is also good I just realized I could have an ice cream sandwich as well you could have had an ice cream cookie sandwich I have to try it at some point next time next time yeah. and now it is time for the history mix because we have arrived back at the Lena Horn theater on Broadway to see six very excited um, we've seen it super recently but I am excited nonetheless six with American accents six with maybe some different lines in for American references because because they're not gonna they're not gonna mention GCSEs because they don't do those here um, yeah maybe different merch different 
theatre that we've never been before. Lots of exciting things, lots to be aware of. Um, so we're going to go and see Six and I'm going to hand over to Aaron James, who is about to start vlogging our theatre trip, so head on over to his channel to go and see that. We're quite we're very excited. The one thing to note on Broadway is you cannot film the Mega Six because of the union rules. So Still there will planned. not be a Mega Six in this. Nada, no um, Mega Six. But we're still going to take you around the theatre, show you what the differences are, and I'm very excited because, like, fun little fact, I get to work on the London production of Six. I get to work on, I get to support on the press campaign for the West End production. And we're preparing to go in. I like this lighting. Look at this fan art wall. And then when you come in, it's all sequins around two crowns. Very cool. You come in at the side, so not through the main doors, but through the side. And here are all of the merchandise. We have New York exclusives. Look at this. Oh my god, hey, it's Mickey Joe with the cocktails at six. We have the Rain or Shine, which has absolute citron, lemon moanin, and club soda. The Air of the Dog, like Hair of the Dog, which is Jim Bean Fire, Granny Smith Apple Moanin, and club soda. Fascinating. Uh, we have the Spill the Tea, number three gin and white grape slushy. The Girls' Night with a K, I'm all about these puns. Uh, Saws of Gold, Triple Sec and Watermelon slushy. Piccadilly Punch, Pink Lemonade Vodka, Pomegranate Monin Club Soda and the Royal Lush Empress Gin Blue Curacao and Club Soda. Amazing. We also, a lot of young fans at this show as well, just like Wicked we have Mocktails. And they are lemon, green apple, frozen white grape, frozen watermelon, pomegranate, and blue citrus. Are those the six colours of the queens? Gold, green, white, red, pink, blue. Yes, yes, I think they are. Then, much like in London, we have the Crown Jewels merchandise stand as well. So Erin's already showed you downstairs this New York exclusive t-shirt. Uh, saying Queens, New York, that's genius. We also have that I Love New York style t-shirt but with a crown, I like that. This, the Ex-Wives Tour long sleeve top. Haven't seen that before, that's very clever. And then as we approach the bar to order a drink for ourselves, I noticed they have today's special. All you need is sangria. I don't know that that's a line from the show. It's not quite all you want to do and it's not quite I don't need your love, but it's somewhere in between. It is red or white wine, orange liqueur, ginger ale and juice. Aaron just got idea. And we are seated in Melina Hall. Look at those red curtains, very royal, very cute. Three, three boxes on either side. And then what we're used to with the set, this is so much wider than the West End. And we have our playbills and we have a slip that tells us which queens we have. Because as you know with six, it's different. Oh, and like the West End and touring programs, they've put the insert in of all the details about all of the queens, which is fun that they still have that even in a playbill. So because of the way that six works, you are likely to see alternates on quite often and at this performance we have this slip telling us who is on. We have all of the principal queens except for Aragon. Holly Conway is one of these alternates. There she is. We'll be playing Catherine of Aragon. How exciting. Yay! Oh my god, hey! Hello. We enjoyed six. Had a yes. great time. Very sexy. Um, and now we are at... Is there a... Hold on. If I start this way. Is there a... How far away do I have to walk to the front? There we go. We're at 54 below. We are below 54 below. Um, and we are going to descend to the depths of it, which is exciting because we have seen Aaron James how many so videos? Many videos. <laughs> so many countless videos of this place. Of performances from yeah. 54 Below. And I now we are going. Yeah. We are going to be among 54 yeah. Below. And we didn't get to go last time. No. So this is, this is very exciting. Because Ashley was like, you have to visit 54 Below. And we just did a random show that we thought would be fun. So random. 9.30 yeah. Monday show. It's called Sunday Brunch. Sunday Brunch the Musical. Sunday Brunch. I can't I even make that it, joke I think it is. Tick Tick Boom. It's not even original. Wow, maybe that's where it's from. Maybe Originally. A, this is a Tick Tick Boom <laughs> offshoot parody musical. Or it's not. I don't know. We'll, we find, will find out. We'll find out and we'll tell you. But for now, we're going to 54 Below. Yay. YouTube right now. I didn't realize I did food. Which I guess is how I do I do live for you all all of the time. Yeah. I will say this is definitely the American uh, crazy cox. They yeah. are very similar. I didn't realize how similar they are. Who knew they did food? Who knew they yeah. did so much food? This is but like American bars, what they call like bar snacks, it's like a full English meal. You gotta love it. 
saw Sunday Brunch the musical at 54 Below which was super fun. It was really fun. <laughs> had a fun really, really time. Fun. Like full disclosure we had like a slot free this evening because six is a short show and it started at seven and Ashley geniusly was like we should go see whatever is at 54 Below because we hadn't been to 54 Below yeah. Yeah. so like all we wanted out of this was to like see something at the venue and that was so much fun. I laughed loudly more so than I've laughed at a lot of Broadway shows that are meant to be very funny so that was a win there was some genius songs in there had a great time had a great time yeah yeah loved the uh, he's not even Jewish song loved the cult song like I love genius. I love that people who don't know this who haven't seen this are just gonna yeah. <laughs> love yeah. <laughs> loved the cult yeah loved that yeah totally makes sense for a musical <laughs> called Sunday Brunch. Does that, does, is the title at all functional is the question I started to ask myself. I think it should have been called Graduation Brunch, but That's the song... That's what I, th I think, gradu I was kept going over titles in my head, I was like, graduation, graduation needs to be in there brunch. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But it, the song Sunday Brunch is very catchy, and I think... Graduation Brunch. The song can still be called Sunday Brunch. Yes. It just gives you the setting, like... Shows don't need to be called the same thing as their opening number, otherwise it would be like Circle of Life and Bell and... All of those work though, I <laughs> Yeah, but they wouldn't be as good titles. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a better terrible example. What's the first song in Hadestown called? Uh... Oh my god. I can't believe you don't have to talk fake Hades Town fan. Road to Hell. Thank the Road you. to Hell. Oh. No, it's still a pretty good like, title. I was, like, I was like way down Hades Town and I was like, no. That is not the first one. Where are we going, travel planner Ashley uh, Hufford? We are going to a place called The Spot. The Spot. We're going to The Spot. We'll meet you at The Spot. Yes, it's a bar that does a Broadway musical Monday. Amazing. Never been. I mean, I've never been. I've been here for Drag Brunch. I've never been here for Musical Monday. Um, but my birthday's in. An hour and 15 minutes. It is. We're going to ring in your birthday at a musical brunch at a gay bar. That feels so appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for you. Thrilled and elated. Oh, that curve was higher than I thought it was. <laughs> Thank you. 
beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It is. Time has lost all meaning. Oh my god, hey! Hello! Good morning, everyone. We are in Manhattan this morning. It's before midday. Yes. We have ventured in from Brooklyn because this morning we are going to uh, go up the Empire State Building yeah. for the very first time. We saw it yesterday because we came to 34th Street and now we are back one day later to go and visit the Empire State Building. I know very little about the Empire State Building. <laughs> Oh, it's very tall. It's very tall. King Kong. Yeah. I guess is a thing. Uh, so on our last trip, we did the top of the rock yeah. viewing platform because people suggested that to us, sort of in lieu of the Empire State Building. But we want to try this one now as well. And I said the other day, um, I feel like you really need to do one of these viewing platforms to really get a sense of the city because it's very hard to see it all and take it all in otherwise because lots of lots of tall buildings and all you get is is this on the streets because of the grid system and because of all the skyline so you've got to go up above all that to really get a feel get a grasp for new york so that's what we are doing this morning are you excited aaron james mm, in between you'll be fine aaron is not thrilled about heights no it's going to be fine Oh my gosh, most famous building, and you get to see it built. Keep your arms and legs inside and keep your eyes open. See those hot rivets fly through the air? Nice catch! Ooh. Woo! Go ahead to the top of the Empire State Building, right here in the heart of New York City. Okay, so my ears fully exploded in that elevator, but look at our view already from the 80th floor through a window here. That other tall building you can see over there with the platform coming out of it is the edge. We might be going on that later today if I can convince Aaron. He's not too sure. And that's the Hudson River in the background. Can we see any theatres? Not really. Not really, because they don't tend to be skyscrapers among the New York skyline. This is the south-facing view from the same floor. You can see down to what I believe is the financial district. Eye-catching golden roof over here, and then over to Brooklyn on our left. Got to look right in the distance for the Statue of Liberty, because as I've mentioned before, deceptively short uh, metal woman. There we go, we can see the Chrysler building, various bridges on the East River, and over to Brooklyn. We're very high up, everyone. We are very high up. We're on the 86th floor now. I will say, I feel less on the edge of a building as I did at the top of the rock. Yeah, there's more, there's like a, a very sturdy wall, and all this going on. Um, so, not too stressful? No. Not too not stressful. stressful. There you go, there you go, but obviously amazing views. Yeah. And you can then get a sense of where everything is. Yeah. So this is the north facing view from the 86th floor. Now you do get a better overview of Central Park if you go up to the higher floor, but I think probably better still is just to go to Top of the Rock like we did last time because it's closer. It's that building you can see right in the middle over there. A little bit closer to us down here, we can just about glimpse through to Times Square. Uh, you can just about see it between some of these buildings, um, but given that that's where all of the theatre district is, you can see why we can't pick out too many theatres from up here. Oh, I'm on someone's roof. I can see Times Square right here, if you can see the lit up boards. So most of them are on this side, which is annoying because they're actually right behind these buildings, these skyscrapers. And then the others are down here, but there's not that many. Theatres normally like to be seen from everywhere, but here, not so much, not so much on Broadway. I like to be cute and hidden by little treasured gems. So we're heading back down now to ground level. Um, you could spend a lot more time here. We've only been here for about an hour since we initially arrived, but we have a lot of other things we need to do today. So we are heading down uh, to go and do the next part of our day. We'll see how long it takes us to get out of the Empire State Building. We've just walked down the stairs, the like five floors or six floors 
um, rather than wait for the lift from 86 back down to 80 uh, and that was really easy uh, if anyone does want to get stuck in that queue it's definitely faster to take the stairs on that bit about your fascination with revolving doors. My goodness, I, I do not care for revolving doors. I have this irrational fear of getting stuck in a revolving door and everywhere, they are everywhere on this trip, but I am, I am coping. Also, you know you're doing touristy activities when you are greeted with a line of, um, again, whatever they're called, the pedicab people ringing their rickshaws. bells. <laughs> what we would call rickshaws. Um, and also the people trying to sell the tickets for the hop on hop off bus tour which I've heard from other people is very useful and very handy if you don't want to walk around everywhere we don't mind walking so right now in fact we are walking from 34th Street up to like 46th where the Lentfontaine Theatre is um, for next task of the day uh, you may have noticed I'm wearing a lot of Sweeney Todd that's it? Yes. Sweeney Todd merchandise today uh, because I'm filming a collaborative promotional reel with their merchandise manufacturer Creative Goods. So I went to go and pick up a package of merchandise from their stage door the other day. Didn't cross paths with Joshua Grobes or Anneli Ashford or any of the cast of Sweeney Todd. Uh, but I did get some very exciting merchandise that most of which I'm currently wearing. So I'm going to go film a reel at the Lunt Fontaine and then head back to where we're staying in Brooklyn to get changed to come back into the city. Hopefully we have time to pull all of that off. Today's a little bit of a mad day. It's Macy's, the world's largest store. You may have seen it on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Often musical theatre performances filmed outside. Will we go past that spot? We just might, because we are about to head up Broadway. Where's the sign? There it is, you can just about see it. The sign that says Broadway. This seems like this could be where they perform in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. There's the entrance. I don't know. Locals will have to tell us. Time is not on our side today, so we have decided to divide and conquer. Why is there so much steam billowing from the middle of the street? Like, not a usual amount of steam, like an unusual amount of steam. I'll show you if it's still there as we go past. Erin uh, is picking up sandwiches for us from Lenwich, our favorite sandwich place uh, in New York, which is like, a, it's a chain, um, so that's not like a cool, original thing for me to say but Lenwich is great it's so customizable and they do gluten-free bread uh, and they do great sandwiches so he's grabbing sandwiches I'm going to Schmackery's because we can't go a day without getting Schmackery's cookies but also it's our friend Ashley's birthday and we want to get her uh, some birthday Schmackery's so we're gonna go I'm gonna go and do that and then we're gonna meet at the Lundfontaine quickly film some content of me looking mysterious and cool in my Sweeney Todd merchandise which shouldn't take too long and then gun it back to Brooklyn. Every time I pass 42nd Street the American Airlines Theatre has fewer lit up letters on their marquee. What is going on American Airlines? It is currently the American Air Theatre. So Ashley whose birthday it is today uh, as well as being our friend, if you didn't know, is also queen of theatre TikTok and is very well known among the theatre people in the city. So I'm, j I'm just going to go and just order some cookies, but I have this vision of me like saying it's for Ashley Hufford's birthday and then going like, Pierre, a dozen of our finest. I don't know why it's called Pierre or why it's, it's suddenly the townspeople from Beauty and the Beast, but that's, that's what I'm picturing right now. Okay. Got a selection of schmackeries. Six for twenty dollars, which for some of the most delicious cookies in the world, uh, you, you can't beat those prices. I did see a sign that said they had a death rattle cookie, as in only murders in the building, 
uh, exclusively on October 3rd. We were in the city on October 3rd, but I didn't know about that. That's so sad. What were we doing on October 3rd? Did we go to Schmackery's and not see it? Did we just not go to Schmackery's on October 3rd? That seems inexplicable because I feel like we've been to Schmackery's every day of this trip. I am heading over to 46th to go meet Aaron outside the Lundfontan Theatre. We're filming this content today because they don't do performances on Monday or Tuesdays because I guess Josh Groban didn't want to, so they have a slightly different show schedule. I think they only do seven a week rather than eight, but the theatre being dark means space outside. It's also a, a pretty good time of day for the theatres not being crowded. If you want to take good photos outside of theatres, don't go in sort of like the hour before a show is going to start. Go while a show is on, that'll be much quieter, uh, or like way earlier in the day. And costume change, bam! We are back where you last saw us, I think, <laughs> in Times Square uh, with Ashley. Hi! Who's birthday? We're both wearing like checked blazers. Oh yeah. I just noticed this. We're both in Spring Awakening. Yeah. <laughs> And we are heading to Ellen's Stardust Diner, which Aaron and I haven't been to yet because we didn't get the chance to go on our last I trip. haven't been ever. But you haven't been, no. which is inexplicable. I know. It's weird because I grew up 45 minutes outside of the city. Sure. It's never happened. Sure. So we're doing it. But also your friend Michael, who grew up what, on Long Island. Went like every weekend. So, so he yeah, came here constantly. So we're all collectively uh, losing our Ellen's Stardust Diner virginity today. It's this way. This is the way that it is. Kate's already there. And we are, we have several things to do. I'm a little nervous, if I'm being honest. I'm kind of scared. Fine. I don't know what to fun. expect. Should we tell them it's your birthday or should we absolutely not tell them oh, it's your no. birthday? Yeah, no birthday, birthday. They're going to put you on a table and someone is going to sing music to the night to you. I don't want to musical theatre themed. There are a couple of musical theatre novelty items on the menu though. They have the Joseph and the Technicolor Bagel. Uh, yes, it's a rainbow bagel, it seems. Was it portrayed by 11 other bagels? Who knows? And then there are some more, but they're on the other side of the menu. Excuse me one moment. So we have some cocktails as well. Persephone's Punch for you Hades Town fans. Pineapple Under the Sea Margarita, that's Spongebob coded for sure. The Miss Saigon Sling, explicitly a reference. The Pink Ladies Martini, giving you grease. The Music Manhattan, and simply an old fashioned. Well, not an old friend's fashion now that Marilee's on Broadway? Maybe. Let us not forget as well, the Mamma Mia meatloaf. You gotta love it. standing up because it's her birthday. Yay! 30 years! This is the Cookie Monster milkshake. Look at that. It's blue and it's got cookie dough. We love that. Happy birthday to you, Ashley Havard. Happy birthday! This is your PSA to check your drink after the confetti drop. 
because this was too close. Okie dokie, so we've just had, uh, well, mine and Aaron's first experience of Ellen Starless Diner and Ashley's, um, which was fun, lots of food, very American diner-esque. I feel like those of us who hadn't been before were expecting it to be a little bit more musical theatre, and I knew it was, I've been told by other people, like, it's not exclusively musical theatre. I think I just expected the ratio of musical theatre to non-musical theatre to be different. I liked the Be Our Guest moment. I think I just wanted more of it to be that, but it's still a fun time. It's still novel. I d For a lot of it, it was just like cool that they were singing live, but it didn't like command your attention to be watching it constantly, which I guess is good because at some point you do need to eat your food and they are like, there's not gaps in between the songs like at the Theatre Cafe Diner. They're very different in terms of venues. Uh, I think the songs at Theatre Cafe Diner are wholly musical theatre and they're more of an event. So you like pause what you're doing to watch and then there's a couple of tracks played over the speaker system and then someone will sing again. And here it was just like people were singing back to back to back to back to back. Phenomenal talents, great vocals. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Ellen Stardust Diner. We're now walking down 10th Avenue to go to the shed to see the world premiere of the last ever Stephen Sondheim musical, Here We Are. I cannot even fathom this. I know so little about the show. I have no sense of what to expect. None of us really do. Uh, so we're all just a bit overwhelmed, honestly. So we weren't sure we were going to get time for this, but we've still got like an hour and 40 until the show. So we're, we're going to do The Edge, which is another viewing platform. This is the scariest one. This is like the, I mean, it's called The Edge. Feeling good? Feeling positive? You said this morning's was so like not that bad. Yeah, but I knew this one would be. I don't know. I've had experience told from me from friends. Could be fun. Could be fun. Manifest that it's fine. And here we are on the 100th floor, currently inside, looking through some floor-to-ceiling windows, but the news flashes that the sun set while we were <laughs> While we were queuing, that was about a half an hour queue. Times Square over that way. You can see it over there. You can see some of the same views we've seen earlier today. You can see the Chrysler building over there. This is the Hudson. All these different piers down the side. Wow, that's beautiful. This is the view. This is the kind of panoramic thing you don't get at the other viewing platforms. With the sunset over there, with the East River on this side, in Manhattan. Look at all of those lights. That is amazing. So you can always tell the really good spots at these things because there's usually a queue. And so here at the edge, they also have this set of stairs that you can go up to for a slightly higher view for this real panorama of Manhattan. This is our first time doing a viewing platform at night as well and seeing all of these lights. Look at the lights on the Empire State Building. I think that's the Empire State, but I'm really bad at recognizing the Empire State Building. <laughs> just no big deal, just iconic piece of New York skyline. But I didn't know I had lights like that because by evening I'm always in a show in New York. So that was pretty magical. Um, we're gonna head back down to ground level now to go and see the new Sondheim musical. Yeah. But The Edge verdict, Aaron James, on a one to 10 of scariness? Seven. Seven. But you were just saying yeah. not as bad because it was night. It's here at night time, I think, because the drops, like the height and the, the feeling of it isn't as stressful as I think it would be in daylight. I think in night time you get, you get mysti mystified by all the lights and all the buildings, but you don't 
think about the distance as much. Sure, sure. I will say, do as we say, not as we do. Factor in that it will take time to queue to get up to the thing and then to queue for the lift to get down. So many people up there and then when everyone wants to leave, you still have to, oh my ears have just unpopped. You have to then queue for the elevators. Only need two elevators. Only two elevators to come back down. Uh, so we queued for 10 minutes to come down. We queued for half an hour to get up. Um, and it's now, where am I going? It's now 7.21, ahead of an 8 p.m. show at a theatre we've never been to before, where we've been told the entrance is a little bit harder to find. So we're playing a little bit fast and loose with our timing. So we're gonna head on over to the shed. Head, 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 head to the shed. And here is the artwork outside of the shed for Here We Are. As you can see, book by David Ives, music and lyrics by Stephen Sondheim, directed by Joe Mantello. That's the time that it's running on here until... That looks like the entrance to it. What a weird little entrance. Yeah, it feels very off-Broadway, which is fitting. It feels like all of the viewing platforms we've been going yeah. to today. So if you're looking that over there is where the shops are at Hudson Yards and the vessel is up there. And then you can down and then this is the entrance to the shed. <laughs> So this here is a pre-show menu for Here We Are. Let me see what I can tell you about this. We have some food options. We have popcorn, marinated olives, creamy tomato soup, hummus and crudite, gem salad, cheese and fruit selection, charcuterie, all very fancy. The special feature cocktail, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, but it does have cyanide. Aperol, soda, prosecco and lemon, that's fancier than my tastes, clearly. And then theatre-friendly drinks. We have some canned cocktails, canned beers, some canned wine and some sodas. So we are about to go up the escalators to the Griffin Theatre, which is where here we are, it's so all the way up there. Then you head over to the side, pick up your version of the playbill, and then take the elevator or the escalator up to the Griffin. So we're heading up. And it's basically the same size as a playbill, but obviously isn't a playbill. Here we are. We're going up the second one. And I believe outside, that's the High Line. Oh, yes it is. So, just casually seeing the High Line as we're heading up the escalators, aren't we, Mickey? Yeah. And now, floor three. Then we've made it. And look, it's all decked out, ready. Here we are, and then the cast is all there. No understudies on. This is that same and no photo or video of the show when it's on. It says the play, but it is a musical. And we are in. Was well, nice lighting up at the top. Very fun. We're about to find our seat. And we're in, and people are already out on the stage. Very, very excited. The one downside with this theatre is that if you're just needing a restroom, it means all that time because it's right by the auditorium. If you want drinks, however, or anything like that, you need to go all the way back down those escalators that I showed you at the start. Just slightly, meaning you're gonna have to be quick. Just for even the timings of this. Oh my god, hey! Hello. Good morning, after, it's after midday. Good afternoon yes. everyone. Uh, we're in New Jersey. We in are. New Jersey. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I was doing both, we're we not doing both. No. Okay. Uh, we have arrived in Red Bank, New Jersey this morning. Yeah. Uh, so we took the subway over to Penn Station, bought our tickets at a machine, nice and easy, uh, and then got onto our train. The platform gets announced about 10 minutes before the train needs to depart, so there's no sense in getting to Penn Station like so early. We left a lot of time to like find the ticket machines and buy our tickets, um, but then otherwise very easy process. Yep. I think for anyone uh, traveling out of New York for the first time, bless you. <laughs> Thank bless you. you, it's the sun. It's the sunlight. <laughs> this happens a lot, he does this. Um, but yes, arrived in Red Bank, New Jersey. Uh, to go and see Hair, the musical Hair, at the Two River Theatre, which we can see from the train station. So this is all nice and easy. We have been to New Jersey before. We came here, not here, but we came to New Jersey to go to Paper Mill Playhouse on our last trip earlier this year to see Hercules. Yes. 
Um, but this is a different, completely different part of New Jersey. So excited and intrigued. These bagel station bagels are huge. Oh my goodness, this is a hearty lunch. And here we are at the Two River Theatre in New Jersey. There it is, there it is. We saw one of the rivers on the way in. I assume there are actually two rivers, or I'm just being facetious. Uh, this is Hare as part of their 30th anniversary season. That's quite special. Uh, so yeah, excited to be seeing their production of Hare. Ha, 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 That's the show. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, and who was in this show? Ha. Oh, so many people. Jordan Dobson of Hades Town and of Bad Cinderella on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, Angel Segala, who we saw in New York, New yeah. York. Andrew Pollock, who we saw. Bad Out of Hell. A long time ago in Bad Out of Hell, the original London cast. Yeah, there are many more. A whole bunch of other talented folks. Yeah. I'm excited to be here because. Uh, this is where Be More Chill started, the musical Be More Chill. Joe Iconis, I believe, like wrote it for this theatre and then on the back of its cast recording success unexpectedly got catapulted to off-Broadway and to Broadway and then came over to London where I worked on the show as part of the social media team. Yeah, Squip Squad, represent. Yeah, so it's cool getting to go to the birthplace of, uh, of a show like that. It's very modern, it's very modern in here. With all wood and roof, it was open design, very cool. Oh and look, there is a hippie hideaway. Paula, welcome upstairs to the hippie hideaway with groovy good vibes and signature cocktails. If you notice, they all have those little stars and that means that they're members of equity. Because it's more of a thing here that there's members of equity and members not of equity in shows. They have to declare it if there's people in it and out. And then you have all the creative teams here. Oh, this is fun. Lots of photos of the different shows that have taken place here. Dancing at Lunasa, Woman of Padilla. Hives of Reason, Be More Chill. So this is the big reason, one of the big reasons making me wanted to come to Two River was because Be More Chill originated here. I'm really into the design of these seats, it's fun. It's different. I like the shapes. And we are in, we have our playbills given to us. They're not playbills by name, but similar things to our programs. And then this is the stage. They've got this nice kind of a like wrap around. There's like kind of a box there's the side seat. It's all wooden quite a small theatre with a round kind of auditorium. It's very nice. And here is the menu of the Hippie Hideaway. You have fresh popcorn, David's cookies, and then the specialty cocktails, which includes the Sheila's Starshine, which is tequila, orange juice, Grand Marnier and Grenadine, Mama Jeannie's Mai Tai, rum syrup, Orgate syrup, orange curacao, fresh lime, falling for burger, bullet bourbon, Janet's apple preserves, fresh cider and orange bitters, and Claude's electric blues which is sky vodka, fresh lime and blue curacao, and then your normal drinks. And this is the view from upstairs. So we came out of the top exit. I kind of think it feels a bit like a museum in this, in this foyer area. <laughs> So the trains back to Manhattan are approximately one every hour. In the meantime, we've walked down to this bridge here so we can look at the river. Now, bearing in mind we've just been at the Two River Theatre. I'm really only seeing one river. Now I know my geographical knowledge leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, this is coming in off of the Atlantic, interestingly enough, because we are uh, basically on the coast. It does fork over there into a sort of another river uh, looking type thing, but this, as far as I can tell, is the only one that na that's named. This is the, the Navasink River, according to Google Maps. Uh, and the theatre was just over that way, so it's very near where they do fork into what looks like it could be two rivers. Maybe that's why it's called Two River. I don't know. Anyone in the know, feel free to comment down below and educate me in my geographical foolishness. But it is very pretty, and it's quite a nice day. So that was hair at the Two River Theatre in New Jersey. And we're now gonna hop on a train to head back into the city 
back to Manhattan to go and see our evening show, which is Moulin Rouge, at the Al Hirschfeld Theatre on Broadway, because we're seeing the second performance of Titus Burgess, who joined the cast last night. Oh, look, a train. Not our train. Titus joined the cast last night as Harold Zidler. And you may be thinking, a show in New Jersey, and then an evening show the same day in Manhattan? Yes, very possible, very doable, very comfortable in fact, because this was a 1 p.m. matinee performance, and hair is not a long show. So it was over just after 3 p.m., and we're gonna get a train just before four, that will get us back to the city just before six. And Moulin Rouge is not until eight, so unusually for us, we have a lot of time to play with, and we are in nothing of a rush. But what we don't want to do is miss this train. So we're going to go wait at the train station regardless. <laughs> Okie so after a slightly protracted ride back into the city because we ended up, I don't even know what happened with our train. It was traffic. It just, it was train, there was train traffic and it took us like half an hour longer than it should have to get back to Penn Station. Oh my gosh, there's horses. Those horses are going to go and see something at the Imperial. I don't, there's horses outside of the Imperial Theatre box office. Yeah, why? Why? Because it's a circus show. Elephants. They're water elephants, so they think there's water there. They think there's water. You can lead a horse to water for elephants, but you can't make it by rush tickets. There you go. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. Did you enjoy that one? You could lead a... No, I need to take a photo and tweet that. Excuse me. I'm still laughing. <laughs> oh, dear. Ooh. Anyway, um, so we had still a decent amount of time. Like, we are... We are fully not in a rush. It's 7.23. Moulin Rouge is right there. It starts at 8. People have been queuing at the Al Hirschfeld since 7. I don't know if they've even opened the house yet, but um, I'm guessing it's a lot of like tourists who don't know that Broadway shows don't let in that much before the show. There's also been queuing on the opposite side from which they normally do, because... They're gonna go round, they're going round the block and down the avenue and not down the street. But it's just an unreal. Gosh, there's a mad That's what I mean. queue. Is this the Titus Burgess impact? So Titus Burgess has just taken over in the show. This is going to be his second performance. Um, we're so excited and apparently so is the rest of Manhattan. In the meantime, let me fill you in on the evening activities you missed. We went to, um, we never know what it's called, I Heart Pizza New York or Stromboli's. It's up on like the corner of 46th yeah. and 9th. It's our favorite like takeaway pizza place. We go there all the time because yeah. they do good gluten-free gluten -free pizzas free. and gluten-free chicken tenders, which we both had with honey mustard. Wow, so good. And the fries, amazing. Then we were gonna go and get Schmackery's ice cream cookie sandwiches, but Schmackery's did not currently have any of their, what is right now their only gluten-free offering. So we had to take our business elsewhere. Uh, and for anyone who is playing the at-home drinking game of taking a shot every time we get a Schmackery's cookie on this trip, I suggest you consult your physician with some haste. Uh, but we went to Junior's instead, which, we, if anything, which we've also visited just as often. More than I think. Yeah, I had my slice of cheesecake and some of your slice of cheesecake and I'm now more cheesecake than I am man, honestly. This is the queue to the Al Hirschfeld Theatre where Milan Rouge is playing. PSA, you do not need to do this. I mean, there's not much benefit to being the first people to get into the theatre because seating is assigned. Um, you can try and beat the bar queues, but pre show they're never normally that bad because in our experience, most people in New York drink after the show. Um, there's also the restrooms, but again, those are at their worst in intermission, so I don't really know what this is all about. I'm a little perplexed, I will confess. But it's coming up to half seven now, and the line has started moving, and we are approaching the theatre. You can just about see this little light-up sign here, which is Al Hirschfeld himself, the iconic Broadway illustrator for whom the theatre is now named. And we are here to see Moulin Rouge musical to return because... Because we can, can, can. And because we can, can, can. Because we can, can, can. And because Titus Burgess has joined the cast as Harold Zidler, and it's his second performance. He debuted last night, 
and we, we find out that he sings everything at the octave. Which is what we'd been hoping for. Well, we were hoping for like a different key, a higher key, because he's singing like the old man keys. Um, but he's not, because he's Titus Burgess. So we were like, will it be a higher key? No, it's the same key, but up the octave, which is thrilling. It looks like Titus is off. It looks like we've got Unstudy Christian and Unstudy Zither. I mean, this happens. We, we're, big, we're big champions for Understudies. Yes, maybe Understudy is going to be yeah. amazing and sensational. Yeah. We shall see. It's Mickey Joe with your featured cocktail report. This time we're at Moulin Rouge. So, we have the sparkling diamond, which is appropriately sparkling wine. Elderflower liqueur, lemon, almond syrup, and burlesque bitters. I feel like those are just regular bitters. Maybe I'm wrong. The Bohemian writer, which is vodka and absinthe, as referenced in the show. Chartreuse, lime, cucumber, and mint, and the Duke. We had that last time. Whiskey, ginger liqueur, lemon, spiced brown sugar syrup, and cherry bitters. It does sound delicious, but this time we're going for the Bohemian writer, going for something a little bit different. This is the Bohemian writer. Yeah. A bit of absence. Can you? <laughs> you can tell the cucumber and the mint, that's all I can really taste. Literally, all I can taste is cucumber and mint. I burned the roof of my mouth at dinner, so this might be soothing. It tastes a bit like. It tastes like the dip that you get with um, poppadoms. Sure, I do. I do taste the cucumber. Yeah, it tastes like the mint bit, but you get like the mint cucumber bit, but you get. I don't hate it. But the cucumber is a little. Yeah, I'm sure I cucumber. Now let's talk merchandise. So there are merchandise kiosks on the mezzanine and orchestra levels. This is a $40 Moulin Rouge t-shirt we have here. There is also a tote bag for 20. You can see a mug. Very aesthetic show with very aesthetic merchandise. We have a nice little ornament there with the logo on as well. We have a program, a Broadway program. Uh, you can get a bundle of some of those items. We have pins. And there's an offer on the pins. We have a necklace item. We have uh, the cast recording. We have magnets over here. We have some key rings. And you can see a bunch of stuff in the background. You can see there's a hat. There are shot glasses. There are... Uh, there's just all the other stuff on display. And then you have some other t-shirts up the top as well that you can, can, can. Uh, a different cut of the logo t-shirt. And then just some slight variations on those as well up the top and a hoodie in there. Lots at Moulin Rouge, lots to enjoy. Our playbills say that Titus isn't, so we shall update you in the interval whether yeah. we have Titus or not Titus, but I think either way we've definitely got an Instantly Christian. Yeah. So either way we're going to be championing a uh, cover today and also look at this red lighting, full red glow. Nice. Oh, look who's it's Into the Woods. This is the original production of Into the Woods. Artwork by Al Hirschfeld. Then you have Guys and Dolls over here. The production I have Nathan Lane in and Faith Prince. And that brings us to the end of our October 2023 trip to New York. Our second time ever in NYC. Second time ever, second time this year, second two-week trip, meaning we spent a month out of our year in New York this year. If you just said that to us last year, we'd have burst out laughing. We'd have been That's like, true. maybe one trip would have been a big surprise so we'd manage it. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I hope you've enjoyed all of these videos. Um, I think I've put this in, ideally by now, I've put this in a playlist to kind of make sense of the order of the vlogs that make up this trip, because we did a lot of interesting things, like we did the three show day, we did the trip to Connecticut, Connecticut in the middle. A lot of firsts on a this trip. A lot of trip. firsts. Before we discuss that, I want to clarify uh, what just happened in that footage you saw from Moulin Rouge, because it was, so we were going to see Titus Burgess as Zidler. We'd yeah. seen Moulin Rouge on our last trip back in March because Aaron Tveit went back into it and maybe it left us a little bit lukewarm. 
And I don't think we would have gone to see Milhan Rouge again if it weren't for the fact that Titus was going into yeah. Zidler. We were like, oh, I want to talk about his performance. It's going to be a very different take vocally, like we were talking about in the queue. And it was his second show and he was out. Um, it said in the, the cast board on the way in that he was out and we were kind of really taken aback because it was his second yeah. show. And not to disparage, like, illness happens whenever. It's and if it was like a COVID thing, then there's no yeah. control over that. And it's I, I've not been seeing on anyone's socials or anything that he's been no. off a ton. We just weren't anticipating that for his second show yeah. of his run when he's doing a very limited run. But understudies are great. Honestly, understudy Zidler was probably yeah. my favourite person in that cast. He was, I think. But would we have gone to see no. a different <laughs> show? We'd have we gone would to see have a, different, seen a show, different show, basically, if we knew that Titus was out as Zidler. But it's one of those things where you find out a little bit too late and then it's like you can't really change plans what do you do um and we had probably the best seats i've ever seen moulin rouge from so that was fun and it's it always looks like a million dollars it's just a fantastic stunning looking show so there's that uh but back up to the conversation we were having a lot of firsts on this trip yeah a lot of firsts we went to new jersey and in fact i haven't even shown you our last day so i vlogged up until going to Moulin Rouge and that was our penultimate day of seeing theatre in New York yeah. because on our very last day of seeing a show we went to Paper Mill Playhouse to go to the first preview of The Great Gatsby which I do plan on talking about here on my channel I just haven't known quite what to say about it or when to do that so maybe stay tuned and I will share a video all about that because you have not only this intriguing production of Paper Mill, but also the fact that there is another Great Gatsby musical also in the works next year. ART. Is one of them going to come to Broadway? Are both of them going to try and come to Broadway? All of these questions and more. Stay tuned for videos discussing that. But we also went to Connecticut for the first time. Yeah. We uh, stayed not in Manhattan for the first time. We went no, to a lot of we went new theatres. We went to Margaritaville. We went to Mar We stayed at Margaritaville. We went to a lot of new theatres. It was a really exciting trip. We went to the Broadway flea market. Yeah. Like, so much happened. So, so much happened. We had a great time. I hope you have all enjoyed watching it. It was lovely to see so many of our friends yeah. on this trip and so many wonderful shows. We had a great time. Just always and forever overwhelmed and overjoyed mm -hmm. that because of... You all watching these videos, basically, we have the opportunity to go and see theatre in exciting places around the world. Yeah. Now, obviously, we have fallen completely in love with Broadway and New York. And I thought about being coy and being like, if we ever get to go again, we are actively planning to go back to New York in 2024. Yeah. I won't say when because <laughs> flights are not booked. No. Um, although maybe, maybe we'll book them, I don't know. Um, but... That is the plan. So you can expect to see more Broadway content. Bearing that in mind, let us know what else you want to see from New York. There are so many more types of videos that we want to make over there. Uh, what kind of things would be helpful for you to see? What kind of stuff would you like to see? Do you want to see, like, guides to any other different places? Do you want to see more videos about the theatres in New York? Do you want to see us doing challenges on the streets of <laughs> Manhattan? If so, feel free to suggest and we will do our best to uh, make it happen um, and any other places that we should visit alongside uh, Broadway next year let us know let us know but thank you as always for watching these videos I hope that you've enjoyed uh, drop a comment down below with um, I didn't even know so many things from this video <laughs> with what you thought the best of the viewing platforms was because we had the edge and the Empire State in this one, what you thought was the most uh, delicious looking thing that we ate. And also, which of the shows that we saw in our entire two weeks uh, back on Broadway uh, that you would most like to go and see. Or which ones you saw that we also saw. Favourite show you saw the entire time we were in New York? Oh gosh, it depends if it's new or repeat. Um, so, of the repeat ones, are you calling Merrily a repeat? Because we'd seen that production? Kind of, yeah. I think Merrily Actually, was Actually, Merrily probably, was probably the best one. Yeah, it I'm just sure. wasn't like... It wasn't like a wow, oh my gosh, because we knew it was going to be great. Yeah, I think it's... It had such an expectation beforehand. of greatness that it completely fulfilled, which is great that we weren't disappointed, but it wasn't like... I think... Overwhelming. Here Lies Love was the surprise show. I'm, oh, I loved Here Lies Love. I just didn't expect us to even see it twice. On the was... day that I'm putting this video out, on the day we're sitting here filming this, it's closed... Um, actually, time difference... 
maybe it hasn't finished, but it will. It will yeah. have soon. Uh, its final performance on Broadway, which is super sad, because I think that's a great show yeah. that never quite found its audience. I've still got the giant piece of pink confetti mm. from the second time we saw it that's hanging permanently on my desk now. Uh, but Love, Tale, Lies, Love. Very sad yeah. about that one. show that surprised me the most, other than Here Lies Love, was Great Gatsby. I thought you'd mention that. But given that I haven't told you anything about it yet, I'm just going to leave that as a teaser <laughs> for my inevitable Great Gatsby video. Stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, and you won't miss it. Meanwhile, I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a, a stagey day. day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!